Hi, my name is Iva Honias Tiwa. I'm from Second Mesa, Arizona. I'm Hopi, my mom's Hopi, my dad's Navajo. I grew up out on Hopi and um, in 1996 was when I first started learning how to make the sifter basket. And how that came about was um, my mom is part of the Women's Society, Basket Society, and she knows how to make coil baskets, but she's not, um, she doesn't know how to make the sifter basket. And these baskets are used in that ceremony, and it was her year of throwing. And she needed like a bunch of these sifter baskets. And these are sifter baskets here on the wall. The sifter basket is called a sifter basket because the original use of it is to sift corn. It has all kinds of other uses, drying green edibles, drying peaches, um, just all kinds of uses. And my cousin Beth at the time was working for me. I own a little Iskasukbu gallery shop on Hopi. And she, my mom had mentioned it, that she needed sifter baskets. And she goes, oh, we can make you make you some. I'll teach Iva and she catches on so fast. So that's how I started. The first basket I made was a, kind of a hard one. It was a satlaku. And it's a katina representing the stratus cloud. Up to this day, I have never made it again. And I did an um, artist in residence at the Idol Jork Museum this past September. And I was looking at their collection and I saw my grandmother's name, one of my grandmother's names on one of the baskets, sifter baskets. So I asked to see it. And um, when I looked at it, I was like, wow, this is the, actually the first design that I started with. And it was a satlaku in it and it was an oval shape. So I'm here at SAR to experiment and I've had this in mind for about two years. Um, and this is one of my projects, is combining the coil and the sifter basket together. And that's the two that I have created. It wasn't easy. I'm, I'm still working at it to figure out how it's going to come together. My very first one that I did was really hard, trying to get the sifter part of it combined into it. So then I did my second one and it was a little easier, but it's still not to what I had imagined it to be. So I'm doing two more and I think I might get it maybe on this third or fourth one. As an artist, we tend to go outside the box. I want to do something different. I thought, I want to try something different and that's why I created that. And when I look at it, it's beautiful. And then when I think about the stories of what they taught us, of how there's significant meaning in designs, it still can be done within this combination. And that's how I see it. And I just pray all the time that, you know, what I'm doing, guide me, lead me, and I hope, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. And, you know, when you see people appreciate that work, it makes me feel good to know that they appreciate, you know, what we've created as artists. The two projects that I'm doing here at SAR, I titled them Building on Life's Creation with Yucca, meaning that the yucca that I gather, I just make whatever I can with it. And the second project that I'm doing is titled Where the Sun Fits In. And it's based on a migration story that my grandfather, my uncle, my brothers um, have taught us. And it's based on a story of how these different clans and our clan, which is Sun Clan, I'm Sun Clan, how we came into our village and what we brought to contribute to the village. And that's why I title it Where the Sun Fits In. And it's going to be the, the picture, um, portrait-like um, weaving that I'm going to do. It's flat with a, the clan symbols on them and then all the clans that migrated together and brought this into our village. So that's what it's based on. It's a lot of um, feeling that goes into my weaving. Um, I know when, when we go out and gather yucca, we have to we still pay for it. We 
put out cornmeal and say thank you creator for allowing us to live off this land practically i am i'm selling these baskets and living off of it providing for my family through it so it's something that was given to us this is the first uh coil sifter basket i was trying to think of a name what am i going to call this combo i started saying combo basket but then i'm like this is a bota, a coil basket, and this is a dutsaya, the outer side of it, the sifter. So maybe I said botsaya or bota dutsaya. <laughs> I'm trying to think, and I'm like, what can I call it now that I've created this? So I'm thinking botsaya <laughs> is what I'm thinking, but it's a combination of the coil and the sifter. So this is the first one that I made, and it has the coil. And then the outer part is um, put together as a sifter basket. And the challenges I had with this when I first did it was this came out too bulky. I had woven in the yucca strands to hold it together. And it came out a little too bulky, so I wasn't satisfied with it. But this is the very first one I did. And then this is the second one that I started. And then so I added on the strands a little differently. So if you notice from the first one, the bulkiness, this one is a little flatter. So this is how I added on, I sewed it onto the coil basket and then the yucca leaves were coming out and it was a matter of trying to get the design in. And as you can see, my design isn't as fine as what these ones are the sifter basket and that's why I'm not satisfied with it yet because I want it to be really flat when not with all the bumps inside of it I want it to be nice and level flat in the design so that's what I'm working toward with the third one so with my third one I decided I'm going square and then this is the fourth one that I'm working on. So now I'm ready to add on the um, yucca strands to start the sifter portion of it. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me if I can teach a class in making the basket, but I'm not able to do that because um, I come from the village where we still have to get initiated into the basket society. So I usually tell them I'm not able to do that, to show them from start to finish because of that. We have to be initiated to um, learn this. And, you know, that's the reason why I'm not able to do it. I'll give a short demo and then show them what I'm making and then share the finished piece with them. And that's about it. I'm known for my bright colors in my baskets and I use the commercial red dye. And I have tried the traditional dyes, but they're like a really faded color. The traditional natural colors are the greens, whites, and the yellows. And the yellow you pick at a certain time of the year and it's yellow. So the green, white, and yellow are natural, but the blacks, orange, reds, blues, purples, they're, they're dyed. Um, I've tried, to, like I said, I've tried the traditional dyes, but I just wasn't, it just doesn't stand out, the design. So I've been using the red dye. And that's what I'm known for, <laughs> the bright colors. It just seems like the design just pops out more, and that's why I like it like that. I want to say, too, that I just love this studio. I wish I had one like this at home. <laughs> It's big and I have all the space, the workplace to work in. But this is my yucca that I, as you can see, this here is how it comes when we gather it in bunches. And then I just sort them, clean them, and get them ready for my weaving. So I'm really lucky to find some really long yucca. It's hard to find these long ones. I sort them in size, length, width. Um, so I try to keep them in one bunch together and then decide what I'm going to make with them. Yeah, this is a really long and wide piece of uh, yucca 
versus the narrow long. So they're different sizes. They come in different sizes. So depending on what size they are, I sort them and then decide what I'm going to make. And then you have some really short ones too. And I've made like sandals, baby cradle boards, and it's just art. It's nothing that you can actually use. I just do it as art. Where we live, there's a lot of yucca, but um, we try to get certain types of the yucca. So it's everywhere. I mean, it's everywhere. So it really depends on the artist, I guess. But I, I like to pick out the really nice yucca. It's, it's everywhere. Well, just what I have right now is my colored yucca that I work with. That's going to be part of my where the sun fits in project. I have this idea where I'm going to, how I'm going to put it on around as a border. So that's why I'm saving that. The end parts, they tend to get most of the color, but that's the part we usually cut off. And that's why I want to use it in this other project that I'm doing. I mean, when I'm weaving and then I finish a basket and then I cut them off and I look at the four and I'm like, ooh, that is pretty. It's too bad we don't use that part of it. <laughs> I'm just really glad I had this opportunity to come and be here. Um, I'm here for three months and it's giving me that time to actually do these projects that I've been putting on for years. And I'm just so thankful that SAR accepted my application. I was selected. <laughs>